Yeah. Shit. Ah, damn it. I botched another introduction. I'm Robert Evans. This is Behind the Bastards, the podcast that is never introduced professionally, despite it being literally my my one job to do. Um, yeah. In order to What's distract up with that. Sophie, okay. Everyone already knows I fucked up. You don't have to you don't have to jump on jump on the kick me pile. Here to distract from my failures, uh Billy Wayne Davis! Hey, guys, it's good to be back. I didn't think you messed it up. I thought the enthusiasm was there. That's all that really counts. Thank you, Billy. Thank you for thank you for successfully helping to hype me back up. Now my mm-hmm. ego has exploded again. Good. Um, I like it control. up there real big. It's fun. I just want to I just want to publicly say that Robert told me if he, I if he ever asks me for a green juice, I'm supposed to kill him. Yes, that so was our just, rule. Let's just because keep, of a celebrity that shall not be named. Let's just keep Billy. that that ego nice. Oh, you right mean, under the green juice level. Mm-hmm. Hmm? I think that's asking. You can get your own green juice. You I'm not going to drink. be drinking green juice. Don't it's do it, good Robert. For you. If I care about living that long ever, then I've lived too long already. Yeah. Oh yeah, you don't have kids. <laughs> See, we have to think different. You got it. You got. It. Yeah, I don't. I ain't mad at you. That's good, <laughs> Billy. It's been a little while. How have you been? I'm good. I mean, good? yeah. How's We've all been fighting the powers our own ways. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I saw some of your fighting the power. You can talk about the movie you were in now, I assume. If it's I, a secret, it's a bad one still. I think, <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah. It is fun when people ask me, like, was that you? I'm like, I don't know. I do not know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Billy. Yeah, I was in Borat, too, you guys. It was you really were. fun. You were, and it's a great movie. You were great in it. Uh, and you got to hang out with some of my favorite chuds uh, yeah, up in the I Pacific did. Northwest. <laughs> yeah. Some of the people with guns who like to uh, stand on street corners and yell at teenagers. They're, that they're was light, lovely. <laughs> I mean, if it, it wasn't like I've told my wife and other people, it was like, they're like, were you scared? I was like, it was people I grew up or with. I know how to talk to them. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're not they're not super complicated, but you know it is complicated, Billy. That that was a great transition. Thank you. No, I was. Do you have a guess? So much stuff in my brain. Just eggs. Yeah. Eggs, eggs are complicated. Hmm. A lot going on with an egg. Oh man. Yeah, I forgot what podcast I was on and <laughs> where we were going. And I was like, oh, eggs. And then I was like, no, this is not going to go in a good... I like eggs, and now I don't like them. You like eggs, so you like eggs. You're on board as liking eggs, that's correct? <sighs> yeah. They're, how do, it's, how do, as far as a d- diet, they're pretty great. How do you feel about war? Uh, <laughs> mm. Less? <laughs> I feel... I mean, at this, at this point in, in history... I don't. I think it's a silly concept. How do you feel about the city of San Francisco? I'm okay. All these things together, I'm on board with. Okay, yeah, that's what we're talking about. The egg war that that rocked San Francisco for like thirty years back in the 1800s. Hell yeah, yeah. yeah we're this talking about the like egg some wars. Silly war that I would be involved in. Yes, it is some silly bullshit, Billy. It is some very very funny silly bullshit and it starts as most stories of silly bullshit do in the city of san francisco or at least like the collection of tents and whorehouses that became san francisco eventually well it was really just a campsite with a lot of prostitutes back then yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) it's always been pretty great it's Uh, always it's always been great yeah yeah. and the poop on the streets thing not new not no (laughs) no no No, the abundance i think is the Mm -hmm. new part Mm-hmm. Yeah. Although that's maybe what I we noticed talking- when I was there. I was like, it's not that there's shit on the street. That is not new. There's a lot of it, you guys. And they're like, that is the problem. That is the problem. And I also think the average fiber content per person shitting on the street may have increased. That's a theory I have. I we're think, hoping- well, I think if we're being honest, what happens is when you're on heroin, you get <laughs> constipated and then you release all of it at once, is what we're dealing with. Yeah. Uh, um, so, Billy, in 1848, the city of San Francisco's population was a mere 800 people. And again, it was basically just a big, muddy campsite. Um, there were more redwoods than people at this stage. And there used to be a shitload of redwoods all over San Francisco before yeah. we murdered all those priceless works of natural art so that we could have, <sighs> you know, like the WeWork buildings. Can you imagine if there were redwoods just all over the city mm-hmm. now? 
it, instead of the things that are there. Yes. Some of the things that are there. We're just like, no, like some of them. Yeah, we can keep like the 500 Club, like the good bars and shit. Yes, that's what yeah. I mean. Yeah, all of North Beach is stays. Yeah. Yes. yeah, just a bunch of bars and Redwoods and nothing else. Yeah. Yeah, a couple of grocery stores. So, yeah, on January 4th, 1848, a carpenter building a mill near Coloma, California, found flakes of gold in the water. Uh, the news got out, and in very short order, tens of thousands of Americans flooded into California's first gold rush. And California's kind of always been uh, just a series of gold rushes ever since. Yeah. That's why there's 40 million people here, because people are dumb and they like they like easy money. Yeah. Um, also, the weather. Vegas ain't getting smaller. No, no, it's not. Uh, thank God, actually, this election. Thank God for Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> One time I will say that. That is the thing. You're looking at the map. Like, huh, I'll be damned. <laughs> well, they did it. <laughs> Nevada, huh? Okay. <laughs> All right. I guess we'll keep gambling illegal everywhere else. Yes. <laughs> you guys earned another four years. <laughs> well, my thought was like with that was like real quick. Like, right? oh, He's pissed off everyone. Yeah, he's he's got Vegas angry. Yes. And they're so easy to distract. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. It is funny that he picked a fight with Philadelphia too. <laughs> yeah, that's just that <laughs> the be- you yeah, you can't they'll they'll come to they'll cross an aisle to get in a fight. <laughs> uh speaking of fights, you know, cuz the Oakland Raiders this is close enough. Anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, all these people start flooding into California because they want a shitload of gold. And the city of San Francisco, or the collection of tents that became San Francisco, grew rapidly from a population of about 800 in 1848 to 20,000 people by 1850. Um, Duh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> I just think of... Have you... And we've been to those cities, like... Where the population explodes and the infrastructure can't really handle it. Yes. There's just traffic everywhere. Yes. That's just traffic. This yeah. is like before sewers. Yeah. Like you see right now in a couple of cities in the world or in, even in the United States, um, you know, they grew too fast. There was a sudden influx of people and the infrastructure can't keep up. And it's a problem. Going from 800 to 20,000 people in two years is a calamity. It's like a hurricane hit. Like it's a natural disaster. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it doesn't it doesn't go well. It creates a series of problems, most of which will actually sound eerily familiar to anyone who lives in San Francisco today or who's just like driven through it. Uh, and I want to quote here from a paragraph in the Annals of San Francisco about the city culture during the gold rush era. Despite the and again, this is like written in fucking the 1850s. Despite the amazingly high cost of living and the extraordinary opportunities for frittering away money, everyone in early San Francisco was supremely confident that he would be able to return home with an incalculable amount of gold. <laughs> Everything was conceived on a vast scale, and there was always plenty of cash available for any scheme that might be proposed, no matter how impossible or bizarre it seemed. Oh, how the times have changed. <laughs> yeah, it's a completely different city today. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> you wouldn't write that exact same paragraph about San Francisco 160 years later. It's just the that that voice has changed. Now mm-hmm. it's like now it's like in a land of ones and zeros. Yeah. yeah. No, bro, you plenty of cash for any plan you could propose. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, no, they're like big cars, but they carry a lot of people. Yeah, those yeah. are buses. No. <laughs> no, no, because we don't pay the driver a salary. Instead, he gets a per mile fee based on an app, and we don't have to give him health care. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Where do you see what I'm going to do to roads? <laughs> <laughs> that's we're laughing but that's a conversation that yeah is that a is conversation a conversation i'm excited for rotor without an e the app to come out and privatize the filling of potholes so that there are somehow more of them um domino's tried that it doesn't work <laughs> So most depictions of San Francisco in the 1850s portray it as, again, essentially just a pile of brothels, casinos, and crude tent neighborhoods filled with filthy male miners. One of the first problems that this explosion in population had is that there were almost no women in the entire city. That's, oh, that's not good for the prostitution. 
No, well, it's good for the prostitutes that are there. Well, that yeah, if yeah. it's good for Brenda. Brenda's yeah. having a good time. <laughs> it's a seller's market for Brenda. Yes. Yeah. yeah, Brenda's like, hey, I, I don't see anything wrong. <laughs> so one miner during this period is purported to have acquired a single woman's slipper and made a good living charging his fellows a dollar to touch it. Oh. Like for- <laughs> I know that I understand how that works, too. Do you know what? I just thought of times in my life where I'm like, I... Could I could see making a living doing that in certain times. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> uh, a less ethical business person in the same field was Eliza Farnham, who operated a boat called the Bride Ship that ferried women from the East Coast to the West, presumably so they could marry whichever miners had the best luck in uncovering gold. Yeah. Uh, Just a that's boat not full the of worst. brides I mean, to filthy mine time down. period, if we're being honest, that is mm-hmm. not the worst way people were getting married. No, because there's a decent chance you'll die on the boat. That's way better than being married <laughs> exactly. back then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so uh, food was, however, by a wide margin, the most expensive thing in the city. Because, again, basically no one lived in California at this point. I should say, basically no like white people lived in California. And the indigenous people mm-hmm. were not exactly psyched to help out a bunch of gold miners. Um, And also, you know, genocide and such. Um, So, yeah, there was not a great deal of farming infrastructure. There was not a great deal of food for this sudden, this what had essentially been a small town that had turned into what at that point was like a mid-sized city almost overnight. Um, There just like wasn't fucking food. And for an example of how like incredibly expensive shit was in San Francisco in this point, it was actually worse than it is today (laughs) by comparison. So restaurants in... Unimaginable. (laughs) Yeah, because it's incredibly expensive to eat it's, in San right Francisco. Right now, it is. Yeah. Qu- that's my opening joke. What I paid I was doing ten dollars for a like, taco. Yeah. My my <laughs> opening joke is literally to the crowd, like, "Oh, do you all are you all roommates? Is that how you all <laughs> is the whole crowd the roommate?" And they yeah. everyone laughs every time because it's funny. Yeah, because they're actually two different households. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So at this period of time, in the early 1850s, uh, restaurants in town charged a dollar for a slice of bread, two dollars if it was buttered, which is the equivalent of fifty six dollars in modern money. <laughs> wow. They are. It's <laughs> neck bread. and neck. It is. That's because San Fran's where that the the toast craze came from. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, you can get some good toast in San Francisco. Look, they've gotten good at making toast over the years. Nobody's... I guess it's always been a staple. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in 1850, a nice breakfast for two, uh, which consisted of cheese, butter, sardines, bread, and two beers, would cost the equivalent of 1,200 modern dollars. <sighs> so. It's the same. It's the same, yeah. Uh, as is probably clear by now, the real money to be made in San Francisco during the gold rush was not in mining gold, but was in selling miners the things that they needed at radically inflated prices, which is kind of the same. There's a fun story from Redding, California, which is the center of the marijuana industry that nobody ever talks about because yeah. nobody wants to think about Redding all that much. Well, um, it's just <laughs> on the highway, so it's easy. It's where they... A lot of the sales happen. Mm, yep, yep. And it's it's a good growing area all around it because it's dry but also hot. Like, people talk about Humboldt, but it's a bit wet there. Um, one of the big things that is like a major product in the pot industry are turkey bags, which is what you put the pot into when you process it. And they're the bags that you would brine a turkey in. Yeah. And the company that made these bags noticed that year round they were selling a shitload of turkey bags in Redding, California. So they Safe sent way. like a representative out uh-huh. to figure out like, are people just eating turkey all year round in this town? And then he found out and he had to like quietly go back home. <laughs> yeah. like, we can't really advertise on this. <laughs> I just this is I just interviewed a lady in Southern Humboldt and during the camp days a bunch of yeah uh, revenueers is mm-hmm. they yeah. is, as I as I was pointed out they said the IRS I was like well moonshine they call them revenueers and they're like yeah. yeah and they went this guy was selling a black pipe and he sold way oh, more yeah. than oh, anyone yeah. ever had ever ever sold ever. And they're like, let me see your books. And the old man was like, nah, uh, <laughs> nah, no, no, <laughs> no. You don't need to know why I'm selling this much of this no, stuff. No, <laughs> because you guys will make them stop doing this. And 
I like money, man. I ain't doing anything illegal. I just yeah. like that the old man was like, no. Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. I ain't turning I that think... money fountain off, sir. Yeah. I don't think I need to be doing that. Yeah. So the same thing's happening in San Francisco during this period. People are figuring out, the people who are really making money aren't mining gold. They're mining miners, you know? Um, and yeah, the most intelligent of them realize that, you know, the easiest thing to sell miners and the most profitable thing would be food, um, and sex, but there was more competition in the sex business. Now, Mm -hmm. the most desired food stuff in all of the Bay Area was eggs. Not only are eggs filled with protein, they're a necessary ingredient in all manner of pastries and cakes. You know, you can't make fucking bagels or whatever without, or whatever, I don't know. You can't make a lot of shit without without eggs. Yeah, they're critical. And alas for the growing polity, Gold Rush era San Francisco was completely the fuck out of eggs. The problem started when the first 10,000 men or so flooded into the city and devoured every single chicken and rooster that they could f- get their hands on, like a horde of protein-hungry locusts. They just ate everything. Like, there's enough chicken to feed 800 people, people move in and eat it all overnight, and suddenly there's no more birds to lay eggs. Uh, now... It's not quite certain why, but no additional birds arrived for years to restock the Bay Area's farms. And this is a bit of a historical mystery, because both Southern California and Baja had farms and had chickens. And even in 1849, it wouldn't have been hard to send a few boatloads of birds up the coast. Um, And there are different theories about why none of them actually were, like, there were no, just no populations of, of breeding chickens in the Bay Area. One of the theories comes from an artist named Eva Crisant, who was one of the world's top experts on the very weird subject of today's episodes, and she cites some convincing evidence that a mix of two factors contributed to the lack of poultry. Number one, chicken feed was in terribly short supply, and thus chickens were primarily fed garbage, uh, which didn't help their health, and some sort of horrible bird plague kept killing off imported birds, because we do have cases of people bringing in birds, and then they'll all die basically overnight. So, for whatever the cause was, it was impossible to establish a population of chickens in the city of San Francisco for years. As a result of this, in a city famed for gold, one of the most valuable items was the humble hen egg. It was not uncommon for eggs to be imported from as far away from Chile. Like, they're they're bringing Chilean eggs into San Francisco because there's no laying eggs. And you see the, the I, thing. I got to, you. Yeah. I got you. I know. I, uh, I could see those assholes still doing stuff like that today. Yeah, well. Being like, I mean, oh, that... That's a Chilean egg, motherfucker. That's $1,200. Yeah, you're going to have to pay a lot of money for these Chilean chickens. You know where Chile is? No? Yeah, it's real real fancy. It's the eggs real. are the best. It's yeah. very fancy. <laughs> they feed the chickens satin. <laughs> <laughs> so the price of eggs at its peak was near the equivalent of $30 in a modern dollars an egg in San Francisco. Um, <laughs> yeah. I know some people who would be very rich based on their backyards, if that was still the case. One journalist at the time noted that the city of San Francisco was desperate for eggs and that a fortune would be made by any man or woman daring enough to figure out how to provide them. And it just so happened, Billy, that 26 miles off the coast of the bay lay the Farallon Islands, known as the Islands of the Dead to the Coast Miwok tribe. The Farallons are some of the least pleasant land on planet Earth. 211 acres of rocky cliffs and outcroppings of solid granite. They're basically giant sharp boulders in the middle of the sea. That's what I was um, going to say. It's like, it just sounds like big rocks. Yeah, they're huge, deadly rocks. One representative of the National Marine Sanctuary described them as looking like a piece of the moon that fell into the sea. Now, the Farallons have never hosted human populations naturally like like the indigenous people didn't live there they call them the islands of the dead like don't fucking go there you'll get (laughs) killed it's a bad place to be partly because the seas around them are incredibly rough and until people had kind of like more modern boats even when people had modern boats boats crashed into them all of the goddamn time yeah i was gonna say Um, it's still like it's still just it's needless you guys you don't need to do this Yeah, and there was really nothing there. The island's only natural inhabitants were hordes of sea lions and hundreds of thousands of birds. The most common species was called the common muir. It's a small ocean bird with exactly one noteworthy attribute. 
its eggs are the size of softballs. So it's smaller than a chicken, uh-huh. but its eggs are like twice the size of a chicken's eggs. Now, mere eggs are actually, if you look them up online, they're really cool looking eggs. I kind of want to get some and, and try them. They're rounded at the bottom and narrow on the top, kind of like one of those Russian nesting dolls. Um, and it, it's theorized that this is because they lay them on the sides of cliffs and it stops them from like rolling over. Gotcha. They're really neat. They're very vividly colored. Some of them are like turquoise and they're covered in like black markings that look almost like alien handwriting. They're like pretty- Like a nice, like a nice mug from, yeah. from like, uh, from like, Chaos. Yeah, they, they they look like somebody in Taos made them. And like, yes, yeah, that's yeah, what you described. I just thought yeah. of an aunt I had. I'm like, yeah. she would love this this egg. I just have yeah, a I side said, note question, Billy. When I huh? said, do you want to come back on behind the bastards? Did you think we would be talking about eggs? I don't. I never know. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, I wanted it's to have a very fun one. Funny to I me. didn't. I didn't think that the president of the united states that would discuss stuff that we had discussed fair enough the bleach i know know. that was like i was like i don't like that i'm ahead of this i don't like it yeah i'm not i'm not wild about the fact that the thing that we laughed at because it was absurd was then urged for people to do by the president during a pandemic and people yeah when everyone was yeah when everyone was joking about it when it happened i was like this isn't good this This is a problem (laughs) people are gonna die yeah i was like people are already doing this and if uh, the president mentions it it's not good if people are like isn't this funny i'm like i wish it was i do that's the thing. That's what's beautiful about the thing that happened with the four seasons, because most of the things that people have thought was funny that have happened this year aren't really funny. If you understand what's going on, they're terrifying. That one was actually yeah, like, was really funny. Yes. That was that's, just perfect. Yeah, I did. I, yeah. I laughed that laugh where I didn't make noise when I first yeah. read about it, because I was like, I did that thing where I was like, who's behind? Like, I because I was like, some comedian did this. Yeah. Is very funny. Yeah. Yeah, then I, I checked did you, did so you, many did sources. You also do the, I, did you also do like the dry heave? The, cause that. It was like it was like my little toddler crying where I was like the harder I thought about it, the more I was like, that is, it's every now and then karma's just like, here you go. Yeah. This is cause and what and was even I, What was even better about that was being able to share it with people who hadn't seen the story yet and then got mm-hmm. to appreciate their initial laugh about it. It's so funny. Sorry, back it's, to eggs. My it's, bad. It's perfect. No, Sophie, not back to eggs because we're Sorry. professionals and that means it's time to go to ads. Oh. See, Sophie, sometimes I bring us to ads and you don't warn me because I remember and you don't. So there you go. I'm a hack and a fraud, Robert. I'll fire myself. Well, now you're making me feel bad. Yeah, that was hard. That was a harsh treatment. You, you, you really, you really you spun it. that back at me. Now the gun's pointed in the other direction. Just like Raytheon brand, <laughs> shoot yourself in the face rifles. I knew Have this you was ever coming. wanted a rifle I that will shoot you in the happen. face? Raytheon. I don't know. That's not my best Raytheon joke. Nope, but I'll take it. I'm sorry. Ads. We're back. Uh, well, Billy, eggs. 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 So I do suggest looking up mirror eggs because they're they're kind of fucking awesome. Actually, they're really neat eggs. Uh, they're and yeah, they're they're edible. Um, although they have a red yolk and a bluish tint um, that most people describe as unsettling to eat. Uh, and they yeah, just the color. Yeah, because it's like a weird color and it's not it's not terrible, but it's not super appetizing. Um, but there were a fuckload of them. A few sailors over the years had stopped off at the Farallones and found that during big chunks of the summer, it was covered in just piles of tens of thousands of eggs. Um, and while they wouldn't taste great fried, they worked perfectly if you mixed them into dough. You could bake with them and you wouldn't notice that you weren't uh. using a hen egg. And they're twice as big as a hen egg. So they really go a long way towards alleviating the um, the egg shortage. And I'm going to quote from the Smithsonian here. 
Stale muir eggs had a strong, fishy aftertaste. In the words of one commenter, an overripe muir egg is something never to be forgotten. It requires about three months to get the taste out of the mouth. As a result, the eggers inaugurated each harvest season by smashing all of the muir eggs on the island, thereby ensuring the collection of freshly laid eggs. So when people started harvesting these eggs, which we're about to get into, you would have to break all of the eggs that were there when you arrived because it would force the muirs to lay new eggs, and then you would take those eggs and bring them back home. And if you're thinking, was this bad for the mere population? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, as soon as you said commerce, I was like, well, these birds are fucked. (laughs) They don't do great. So bit by bit, people started to talk about how all the eggs on this island might be able to satisfy the Bay Area's deep hunger for pastries. The first man to try and make a fortune off of feral and eggs was an adventurer from Maine named Doc Robinson. He'd heard whispers of mere eggs in the saloons and gambling dens on the waterfronts. In the spring of 1849, Doc and his brother Orrin chartered a boat and headed to the islands. They found them absolutely covered in birds, hundreds of thousands of mirrors. The men loaded their boat so full of eggs that they could barely fit inside it. And I'm going to quote now from the book The Devil's Teeth by Susan Casey. Robinson and Dorman loaded their boat with eggs and headed back to San Francisco, coming up against a nasty storm and dumping half their cargo into the ocean just to stay upright. Nonetheless, they sold the remaining eggs for a dollar a dozen and pocketed $3,000, serious money in those days. Robinson opened his own burlesque hall, another big growth segment of the fledgling California economy, and neither man ever went back to the fire loans, but others did. Within a week of the successful egg sale, Southeast Farallon was swarming with eggers. In keeping with the land-grabbing ethos, six men immediately staked their claim, declaring that the islands belonged to them exclusively <laughs> due to rights of possession and incorporating as the Fireland Egg Company. Egging, though lucrative, proved a tough way to make a living. The season spanned eight flurried weeks between May and July, during which time it was man against mirror and both parties against the goals. Climbing near vertical rises of crumbling granite, the eggers carried clubs in their free hands to fend off the attacking birds, at the same time stuffing the eggs into specially designed egg shirts, giant gunny sacks with multiple pockets scalp wounds were common so <laughs> i just have ne- i mean i've never wanted a fortune that bad i don't think no yeah and it's it's not even a fortune because these guys after the first guy he makes a fortune right he yes. makes sense to me you go out you have like one real shitty weekend and you come back alive and you buy a burlesque call and you sell sex for the rest of your life yes um under i understand that these Mm -hmm. guys are like day laborers yes and it's it's so bad because the um the gulls eat the mirror eggs so like while you're climbing up the rock they're like dive bombing you and like biting into your skull and clawing at you to get at eggs (laughs) it's a bad gig it just sounds like a metaphor for modern day san francisco yeah yeah, it's not any different today. <laughs> I would describe what they're doing as like driving for Uber. Uh-huh. Yes. But more ethical. Yeah. Though yeah. it's a it's a fair wage. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I'm sure they were getting a better wage than Uber drivers are. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So uh, Harper's Magazine sent a journalist out to the Farallons in the 1860s to look at the egging operation. And we have from that reporter a firsthand account of, of what it was actually like. And I'm going to quote It's just him now. making vomit noises yeah. where he's just like, <laughs> <laughs> From 15 to 20 men are employed during the egging season and collecting and shipping the eggs. They live on the island during that time in rude shanties near the usual landing place. The work is not amusing, for the birds seek out the least accessible places and the men must follow, climbing often where a goat would would almost hesitate. But this is not the worst. The gull sits on her nest and resists the robber who comes for her eggs, and he must take care not to get bitten. The muir remains until her enemy is close upon her. Then she rises with a scream, which often startles a thousand or two of the birds, who whirl up into the air in a dense mask, scattered filth and guano all over the acres. Gah. So just shit clouds raining down on you and into your open scalp wounds from the the gulls that have dive bombed you as you're doing your job. Also, Again, hold on, almost as high bad as up. Uber because you're 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 really high up. So don't yeah. let go. Yeah, yeah, and if you fall, you'll die horribly. Um, <laughs> oh God. And yeah, it was the men who did the job tended to be as shady as you would expect of people who are willing to do that kind of work. The egg company hired mainly Greek and Italian immigrants who were comfortable with danger and desperate for money. And we all know what Italians are like, right? I don't. This is a very anti-Italian show, Billy. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, it's fine. It's fine. 
I, I know what they're like. Yeah. So the rocks they scrambled up and down were slick with water and bird shit. Men fell all the time, often from great heights. When workers died, they were just entered into the company logbooks as missing. For an example of one death. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. It's uh. funny. And I was, okay, I'm making a, a bad joke about the shadiness of the Italians, but one of the aspects of this that's really interesting is that a lot of the Italians involved in this were like leftist labor organizers, and this was just like the only work they could get because it was a bad time to be a part of organized labor, um, yeah. especially as things get into the 1860s. Um, so that's a dimension of all of this too, is that there's like these these guys who are kind of locked out of the main economy because of, you know... Uh, 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 politics. Companies not companies not wanting to hire people who want to stand up for their rights as laborers. So yes. instead, they get dive bombed and covered in shit. Um, it's you cool. could go to Bird Shit Island. You could yeah. go work there. Yeah, you don't want. Oh, you don't want to work for the man. You can work for the birds. <laughs> well, and then it's also probably one of those gigs you don't no one tells you what it's really like and then you learn what yeah. it's like when you get out there yeah and the point i'm making by bringing this up is that a lot of these guys a lot of them did have you know some sort of criminal background the others you know being a labor organizer in this period means you've been in a lot of street fights and the point i'm making is that these are really tough people who are comfortable with violence and that's yes. going to matter in a bit <laughs> Oh, so, yeah, yeah. But first, I want to talk about people dying on the job because that's well, always fun. It's. Can I just say, mm -hmm. let's do the job pitch. Where mm -hmm. if if you're just like, okay, yeah, you got to ride a boat out there. Like, okay, I, that's fine. I don't care about that. And then you like heights. Like, I don't care about that. Like, can you climb? Yeah, cool. You just climb up there and get that egg. All right. Also, the birds will. They're they're gonna try to hurt you. All right. That's, and you're going to get covered in shit. They're yeah, going to you shit fall, into your open head wound. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, they're also, and you know how clean birds are. They're going to shit <laughs> in your open wounds. Oh, uh, yeah. And then that guy goes, now I get how much an egg? <laughs> yeah, I think like 10 cents. You know, okay. you're, getting, you're getting paid. You're getting paid. Okay. The money's not bad. Yeah. Okay. So right. uh, for an example of one of the kind of, one of the ways people died horribly, doing the egg job. In 1858, the Daily Alta, California, reported that an egger, quote, missed his hold while robbing a gull's nest over the edge of a precipice and falling, was dashed to pieces on the rocks below. That's how you'd yeah. want to go, I think. To dashed pieces. to pieces? Yeah. That's instant. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I hope so. I hope it wasn't slowly <laughs> dashed to pieces. <laughs> doom. Uh, doom, so, doom, doom, doom. <laughs> And you know nobody went for that body. They just said, oh, he didn't show up to work today. Ah, uh, he's missing. Yeah. No way to know. Huh? <laughs> Send his wife and children a bill for the passage over. <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> the Eggers developed a distinctly bleak view of their work, due in part to their forbidding surroundings and in part due to the death rate. Stories began to spread that if an Egger spent too much time on the islands, he would start to see his name spelled out in the markings on the mirror shells. But still, the money was good, and the Pacific Egg Company was soon harvesting thousands of dollars in eggs every single trip. It was not long before other entrepreneurial types noticed this. As a journalist for Harper's wrote, Of course there was an egg war! The prize was too great not to be struggled for. <laughs> well, yeah, you're going to have a war with the eggs, yeah. It's good to know that, that, that the press has always been stroking just any type mm -hmm. of war. Yeah. Have you guys tried shooting at each other yet? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to stand over here. Let me give it a shot. <laughs> Uh, okay. From the Devil's Teeth, quote, There were nonstop dust-ups as rival gangs battled the company for the right to harvest the eggs. On more than one occasion, soldiers were summoned to calm things down. The battles often lasted for weeks, involving threats, fistfights, barricades, and small arms. And during those interludes, San Franciscans would go eggless once again. Sometimes the ejected gangs would hide in sea caves instead of sailing back to San Francisco, waiting for the authorities to leave so they could take another run at the eggs. One tenacious group steered their boat inside Grand Great Mirror Cave and remained there for two days, during which they were drizzled nonstop with guano. The ammonia built up inside the cave killed several men. Yeah, and the did. danger <laughs> they were pissed to death. Yeah, they were. That's <laughs> disgusting. 
<laughs> and the dangers didn't stop once the cargo was collected. Boats return- running eggs to the mainland were hijacked with regularity. So we got egg pirates in the mix. Well, that's I, as you were describing this, it just yeah. made me laugh because I'm like, man, if you gamify it, humans are down for whatever mm-hmm. the fucking prize is. Yeah. Yeah, I'll wait here while my friends choke to death on bird piss. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to make money, right? I will beat those guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just as long as I get more eggs than the other assholes. That's exactly. Yes. <laughs> Now, what was already a very complicated and violent situation was compounded by some decisions the government made. In 1852, they decided to build a lighthouse on the Farallon Islands. This was a sensible call geographically because ships kept running into the rocks in the dead of night or during storms. It's a good place for a lighthouse. Um, But actually building a lighthouse on such inhospitable terrain was easier said than done. Stone had to be quarried on the island to create the lighthouse. Workmen had to haul bricks up the hillside on their backs. It was just a a miserable, miserable, miserable job. They completed construction in 1853, and just as they were about to begin operation, they had to, like, the last thing they had to do after spending, like, more than a year agonizingly quarrying rock to build a lighthouse, the last thing they had to do was take a lens up into the tower. And as soon as they try, they realize that the lighthouse wasn't big enough for the lens to fit, so they had to knock down the lighthouse and rebuild it. (laughs) It took another two years. Oh, my... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you, uh, do you th- i think one dude about half while well, it was like halfway up is mm-hmm. like hey you got you know what never mind never mind never mind never mind i'm just not gonna say anything i'm gonna <laughs> not be here i'm gonna quit tomorrow <laughs> Uh, So in 1855, they finally finished the damn thing. Several lighthouse keepers and eventually their families moved on to the island as its only permanent residence. Now, this immediately caused problems with what by then was just called the Egg Company. See, the Egg Company claimed to have a total monopoly on the island, a fact which was disputed by the government and basically everyone else who wasn't the Egg Company. What a lame name, first of all. No, that's on purpose. That's That's, that's on purpose. It's like when you name your cat, cat or tiger. Well, Those no, I think what they're doing names. is like, no, there can only be one, and we yeah. are the egg the company. The egg company. We, uh, we will abide shit. no this competition. Some Facebook shit. Drop the the. Yeah, I mean, Facebook was, <laughs> uh, the egg company was the first investor in Facebook. I think it should that, just be egg company. Mm-hmm. Drop the the. Drop the the? I, Sean Parkered them. I, th- I think the the, I think the the is the key. The the is the key. The okay. the is the key. So, uh, not- yeah. The egg company says all of the eggs and everything else on the Farallons uh, are our property, um, which, again, they have no legal right to, but they do have guns. So the lighthouse keepers. They do that, understand America. <laughs> yeah, they like. understand America. That said, the government had guns, too. So the egg company couldn't, like, kick the lighthouse keepers off, but they could repeatedly threaten them with violence. Um, now, but- the problem. Hmm? What would I don't understand that they were like, hey, we'll go and get you. Yeah, part of the, they were like, we don't, you, you can't, if you're going to be here, you can't eat any of the eggs or anything else that's on the island. Oh, I see. And they were like, but we live here and it's the government's island. So that starts the problem. Um, and what kind of continues it is that. So in 1858, this guy named Amos Clift gets hired to be the head keeper of the lighthouse. And Amos kind of organized the other lighthouse keepers by saying like, hey, guys, our pay is complete shit. Like, we're not yeah. getting nearly enough money. We have to live on this terrible death island in, in the ocean where it's always miserable. The least that we can should be able to do is make a fuckload of money selling these eggs. Like, these, we have a right to this island. The egg company people don't. So why, why don't we try profiting off of this shit? I like Amos. Amos yeah. is like, hey, you guys, we've got to have at least one perk here. Yeah, yeah, and that perk should be getting rich off of the egg rack. Yeah, I'm with eggs. Yeah. Now, the problem is, of course, there's only a few lighthouse keepers, and the egg company is basically a mafia at this point, including the fact that it's filled with Italians. Um, So, for the most part, the outnumbered and vulnerable lighthouse crew tried to pick at the margins of the company's egg business and avoid direct confrontation. That's smart. That's yeah, the, it it worked for a little while. You got a guerrilla warfare, that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Amos, however, was kind of impatient. Uh, he was not willing to just nibble at the edges. He wanted a big cut of that sweet, sweet egg company. And he was also a heavy drinker, um, which oh, of course, man. he worked that at is, a lighthouse, you know? <laughs> oh, man. That is, that's a, uh, being ambitious mm-hmm. and headstrong and a, and a and drinker. A, 
and an alcoholic. Yeah. yeah. You're going to make some moves. <laughs> yeah. So author Susan Casey, he doesn't didn't write about being a drunk, but author Susan Casey, who went through all of the letters he sent home to his family during this period, noticed like the way that he wrote would change over the course of a long letter in a way that heavily <laughs> suggested drinking. <laughs> Quote, in almost all his letters, which tended to run several pages, Clift's elegant penmanship starts off impressively and then morphs into a scrawling mess. As the handwriting degenerates, the complaints about his posts became increasingly bitter and his plans for total egg dominance dominance grow larger in scale. In a letter to Horace, which is one of his family members, written on November 30th, 1859, he outlined the situation. Before I came here, this egg company used to have things all their own way, but since I have been here, things have taken a turn, and they have ascertained that I am not as easily bluffed. I think it will now be settled, and the egg company driven off the island. I shall not abate my efforts in the least, and if I succeed, I may perhaps reap the benefits. Man. Uh, Man. Who's yeah. going to get the eggs? Can so, you imagine? I mean, just from the another perspective, like the egg company, this dude shows up and they're like, Come, "It's already a nightmare here. Yeah. We don't like this is hard enough." Do you think that they called him a rotten egg behind his back? <laughs> Thank you, very perhaps. <laughs> I was holding that in for the entire podcast. I like that you so, think any of these dudes use puns. Fair, no, no. Fair, he was fair. too drunk and too obsessed with eggs. Do you want to know so, who's not too drunk and obsessed with eggs, though, Robert? Don't talk about eggs. Oh, now, the people of Raytheon yeah. are, are big into the egg business. In fact, there's the only... The, right now, our, our friends who are behind such wonderful inventions as the missile guidance chip for the Hellfire missile and the mils- missile guidance chip for the RX-9, the knife missile, are working on a way to shoot eggs right into the mouths of hungry people at speeds exceeding 40,000 feet per second. Not rotten eggs, fresh eggs. We were trying to mm-hmm. feed them. Cooked to perfection. Mm-hmm. Only the fresh, so fresh, they will completely penetrate up to three human bodies before shattering. That's we the Raytheon were, we promise. We were feeding them. Mm-hmm. Ads. Ads. All right, we're, we've, we're, we are, we are, we are, we are. You want to try that again, buddy? No, no. We just are. We just are. We are. We what? just are. We're being. Oh, okay. that's true. We're yeah. So for Amos Clift, the egg racket meant a chance at more money than he like than he would ever have a chance of making anywhere else. As he wrote back home to his family. The egg season is the months of May and June, and the profits of the company after all expenses are paid is every year from five to six thousand dollars. Quite an item, and if this island is government property, I have a right to these eggs, and I am bound to try and get it. And of course, he also added that once he got rich off of the eggs, the government could kiss his foot. Um, so, interesting guy, Amos. Uh, he's decided this is how he's going to make his fortune, and he's kind of revealed in his moves, though, too, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. But that, well, he's the, a drunk. He's a drunk. <laughs> this is the government's island, so I have a right to the eggs, but also fuck the government once I get rich. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> yeah. hey, man, just leave the last part out, dude. I yeah. think you got to play it. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't He wasn't a smooth customer. So Amos organized the lighthouse keepers into a brisk business uh, that partly involved discouraging eggers from landing because they're the lighthouse. So they can make it hard for boats to land. Um, and yeah, they would also like basically work with groups of eggers to stop other groups from landing and get kickbacks from them. And of course, they also got involved in the business of gathering and smuggling eggs back into the mainland. So he gets a couple of rackets set up. Um, what a microcosm of a city. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is a very San Francisco story. Yeah, it's nice. It's, <laughs> it is just immediately like, uh, we can make this racket work for everybody. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of money around the edges of this for me. It's All I got to do is fuck over some people who aren't me. <laughs> just, to, yes, every yeah. American yeah. story ever is just going like, oh, I got this. So yeah. You can, there's a lot about America in this tale. So right around the same time as Amos is getting his, his, his egg scheme off the ground, San Francisco's Daily Alta newspaper reported that the egg company had begun to wage an open guerrilla war against the state, breaking up government roads as well as drawing lines, fencing off chunks of the island, and putting up warnings that lightkeepers and their families could only cross on pain of death. So like... 
<sighs> destroying the roads that were built to allow the lighthouse to function um, and to allow like like basically trying to cut off their supply lines, fencing off the areas where the eggs are and threatening to murder government employees who cross onto egg territory. In June of 1860, as things escalated to a point where light keepers felt unsafe to travel outside without rifles, Clift wrote a letter to his family that, We are now in the midst of the egg season, and the egg company and the light keepers are at war. (laughs) Now... Soon after this point, the Eggers launched a full frontal assault on the lightkeepers, trying to force them off the island at gunpoint. In July, one of the assistant lightkeepers was ambushed and injured. Just as Clift was plotting his response to these offenses, the U.S. government realized what was going on, and rather than get embroiled in an egg-based insurgency, they fired Clift for the undue assumption to monopolize the valuable privilege of collecting eggs. That's so, fair. I think That's fair. Go, I, yeah. I hate to side with the government, but they got a goddamn point on this one. It does kind of seem like he do was you, the problem. Do you think any of his relatives, like he had some smart ass cousins or stuff, and they're like, dude, Ike, you've got to read Amos's egg letters. Yeah. They are awesome. I think he might be. I think he might be in some real trouble. Yes. He's talking about gunfights. Yeah. It's, but he's talking about eggs. It's the funniest shit you have ever heard. <laughs> uh people. Yeah. So at the same time that the egg company men were sparring with the lighthouse keepers, another rival egg poaching company was forming with the goal of conquering the Farallon Islands for themselves and taking them from the egg company. While the egg company was American run, this new company was made up entirely of Italian immigrants. Both claimed to have legal possession of the island, and it seems unlikely that either did. From a local news article at the time, quote, The chief of police and a posse visit the scene. For a long time, two years or more, the right to gather the eggs on the Farallon's Islands has been in dispute between rival companies, and rumblings of approaching troubles between them have been heard for a year. One of these companies is composed mainly of Americans, and it is known as the Farallon's Egg Company. The other is made up of Italian fishermen. The American company claimed to have had original possession of the island and issued scrip in the usual manner of corporations. The Italian company were subsequent claimants, and in a suit between them in Judge Hager's court lately, a writ of ejectment was sued against the Italians, who, being in part possession, refused to obey the summons. Yesterday, Chief Barks sent out officers Ellis and Clark to arrest certain of the Italians, and when they found two parties, armed to the teeth, in possession of different parts of the island, and breathing defiance against each other. The officers attempted to serve their writ, but were opposed, and though the partisans of the egg company sided with the officers, they were unable to effect the arrest of more than three of the other party, the rest vowing that they were ready for a fight, and would rather be shot down than arrested." So, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I just, I don't, I think. Over eggs. Starting a farm Mm -hmm. a little outside of town would have been way easier than this. Yeah, it does seem like that. Seems like that would have been eggs over easy, and they chose eggs over hard. (laughs) I can't even look at you right now. I know. I know. I wanted to throw the microphone, but it's mine. Fair enough. Yeah, well. That's, uh, that's why yeah. I missed the studio. I know, so we could. Somebody, <laughs> We'd be throwing a lot, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Some, somebody said they are upset that we're not throwing bagels anymore, and it's because we're in our own houses. Yeah, we yeah, yeah. we're in I separate can't. homes. That's my property. <laughs> no, if I, I when have, I, I have respect for this. <laughs> yeah, when I throw <laughs> eggs in the in the office, it's Daniel who has to clean them up, and when I throw eggs in my own home, it's well, not me still, but someone else who has to clean them up. Yeah. Wow, you're so, gonna you're gonna make your cat clean that up. Yeah, she loves eggs. Yeah, probably it's protein. Anderson, so, I would never. I would over never. the next couple of years. That's one story. There were multiple gunfights like that, and like they would send in like police and soldiers to the island, and there would be like partisan sniping between the sides, and it just kept happening between these American, what are essentially American and Italian gangs who are are smuggling eggs. Um, yeah, it's like the meth trade, but. Sillier. As the Smithsonian Institute notes, the egging season... <laughs> but it season doesn't be- get you high at all. <laughs> it does not get you high. I mean, if you eat only protein, you can get a little bit fucked up, but not in a pleasant way. No, not in a... Yeah. Uh-uh. No. Or like a sick to your stomach way. Like, I don't feel good. Yeah. <laughs> The egging season became increasingly violent. In the words of one commentator, the eight weeks between May and July devolved into an annual naval engagement known as the Egg War. Brawls broke out constantly between rival gangs, ranging in brutality from threats and shell throwings to stabbings and shootouts. 
<laughs> the fighting was not confined to the islands. Boats transporting eggs were hijacked regularly. According to the San Francisco Examiner, there were many a bitter and fatal encounter between larger parties of rival claimants in boats mounting small cannons. Back in San Francisco, the courts were barraged by a dizzying variety of egg-related cases that included charges of petite larceny, trespassing, property damage, resisting an officer, and manslaughter. So cannons have entered into it. Yes. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Well, we got lawyers involved. We got the press involved. Now that mm-hmm. now we've got arms dealers involved. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Gun runners running guns to the eggmen. Just, just so <laughs> they got they got rifles. Mm-hmm. Y'all need a cannon. Oh yeah, those rifles aren't going to work if they brought cops into the matter. <sighs> just you need a cannon is what you guys need, and I got a cannon guy. Uh, okay. So. So. It all came to a head, finally, in the spring of 1863. A man named David Batchelder managed to gather together an army of Italian fishermen. They made several attempts at an aquatic landing on the island. Each time, the United States Revenue Cutter Service, the Coast Guard before the Coast Guard, caught them and took their guns. But eventually, Batchelder and his comrades succeeded in sneaking around the Cutter Service and landing on the island. On the evening of June 3rd, 1863, the fishermen sailed out to the Farallones again and were met by a group of armed armed egg company men. Isaac Harrington, the company's foreman, warned the men who were trying to land that they would do so at their peril. In return, Batchelder shouted that they would come in spite of hell. Um, And then things got a little bit less dramatic and the Italians got drunk on their boats all night and spent the evening making fun of the people on the shore. But then at dawn, the hungover Italian soldiers attempted another I like landing. Those guys. Those yeah. guys sound fun. <laughs> yeah. So these, these hungover Italians try to land again after making fun of the egg company all night and the employees <laughs> of the egg company open fire for the next 20 minutes. There's just like a massive gun battle, which includes cannons on both sides. By the time the Italians retreat, one egg company man is dead and five boat men are wounded, one of whom was shot through the throat and died a little bit later. So, pretty sizable gunfight there. Now, this finally forced the government to take action, not by banning egging, but by officially banning everybody besides the Pacific Egg Company from egging. Unfortunately, for a reason that cannot be explained, the company found fewer and fewer eggs on the island every single year. There were fewer birds, too. And again, no possible explanation as to why this might have been happening. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> In true capitalistic fashion, the egg company decided to make up for lost profits by butchering hundreds and hundreds of seals and lions in order to turn them into oil. Because again, there's not as many eggs anymore. Now, this process we was. We got hor- these clubs. <laughs> we got clubs. <laughs> we were using them to hit birds, but now the birds are gone. But the birds, they don't want to come around no more. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, capitalism. I felt that in my chest. <laughs> so they start butchering sea lions and seals, and the process of turning them into oil is like, it's a nightmare. You basically, like, cut off their fat and put them in these huge pots. So you've got these giant pots of, like, boiling animal fat. And Ooh. since there's no money in cleaning up the rest, they would just leave the putrefying carcasses of the sea lions and the seals to rot next to these giant, like, bubbling cauldrons of fucking poison fat. The once pristine wilderness of the Farallones were was filled with a permanent haze of fat smog, and the stink of rotting flesh permeated everything. So they, they just turn it in the Mordor. Like, they, we've won the egg war. Let's ruin the islands. God. <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff. It, it is. It is like, hey, that's. I think that's humanity right there. Mm-hmm. That a whole yeah. lot. Of- Yeah, there's a lot to say about climate change in this, including the fact that after the company wins and begin committing genocide against a second species, uh, (laughs) they also start to attack the lighthouse operators again. Um, For one thing, the company wanted to restrict the lighthouse operators and their families from taking eggs for their personal use, even though the ships that brought them food would often be late by weeks due to bad weather, and sometimes they needed to hunt the local birds in order to survive. Uh, They also tried to force the lighthouse to destroy its foghorn, which existed purely to save the lives of boats filled with people. But the foghorn scared the birds, so they were like, you gotta shut that thing off. just... In 1881, company men assaulted another lighthouse keeper for harvesting eggs, and in May of that year, the fucking army had to forcibly evict the egg company from the Farallones Islands. So... I just... Can you imagine being the governor, and you just keep getting this this one island, you're like, God 
damn, these egg guys. I have to send the army out over eggs? Army? <laughs> Is this? <laughs> uh, and that happens, by the way, that big gun battle between those two sides occurs like the same time that Gettysburg is happening. <laughs> so, it's, it's easily a, a much more important battle. I think we can all agree. Well, that just sounds like, oh, you guys are doing fighting. To, we'll do fighting. Yeah. We'll do yeah, we'll show you fight. Gettysburg cowards how it really goes. We'll do it on that. We'll, yo, you guys fighting over freedom? We got eggs. We're doing <laughs> eggs. This is yeah. such a West Coast. That is a West Coast versus yeah. East Coast thing. Like, oh, they're fighting. It's like racism and slavery back there. And like, where are you guys fighting? Eggs. Yep. A slightly higher profit margin. <laughs> <laughs> so... The egg war finally ends after, like, literally 30 years of escalating violence. Um, and in part because they finally established chicken farms in Petaluma and suddenly it's eggs. not yeah. every, every <laughs> direction around San Francisco is farms. Yeah. It's, but they weren't yet. <laughs> it's... I like dude that just immediately started a brothel. He's like, man, I'm not going back to that island. That no. island, that was... I, I am done with eggs. Uh-uh. uh-uh. I it's can do It's all going to be... I mean, eggs will still be involved, but in a less direct way. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah, uh, mere eggs became much less common over the years uh, because after four decades of taking all of the... Of, of not just smashing... Of, like, not just taking eggs, but smashing all of the eggs on the island so that they would lay more eggs and then taking all of those, the bird, the mere population on the Farallones dropped from an estimated 400,000 to 60,000. Um, because, you know... <sighs> Yeah, it was a good old-fashioned genocide. So you could say th- there's a degree to which the industry kind of destroyed itself um, yeah. because it was greedy uh, mm. and made the environment that sustained it no longer possible. Oh, yeah, I guess there's no... Yeah. No, it's a thing that has never happened again and never will it's happen again. probably not happening right now. No. There's no signs of that happening now. No, why would we? Why would we? why would we do the same thing repeatedly uh thousands of times until we all die <laughs> that doesn't sound like us uh, what if we just made seeds that only worked once <laughs> well billy that's the egg war <laughs> coo- that coo- was kind of fun one yeah it was, it, was a, it was a it was a hooda one and i figured like it's out, like, like one I, of those where yeah. it's like i don't think there's a bad guy and i mean there's a good guy or a bad guy in that one yeah i think the good guy is the guy who made that brothel Yo, he <laughs> yeah. is the only one. Yeah. Yes, he was the. And yeah. he told some people about it. They're like, how'd you get this brothel? He's like, oh, there's an egg island out there. I wouldn't mm-hmm. go out there, though. And people are like, okay. And he's yeah. like, I told you guys not to go out there. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a hoot of a tale. Um, I should note here that I found out after I had finished researching and started writing that this is another episode that I think the dollop beat me to. So, like, to hell with you, Dave. I'm going to. I'll get my revenge. I wasn't going to not do it because it was election week when I wrote this and I don't have that much time to research stuff. But yeah. It's okay. Yeah. It just happens. It's the internet. Yeah. Anyway. And they're both talented. So So we're good. Yeah. Um, So, you know, Fuck listen, you, Dave, listen to both, listen to both episodes <laughs> and then send Dave and I both extensive essays taking apart who did better at which portions um because we i guarantee you we'll both read them and take them to heart Um, and gareth and i will just be like the press we'll just sit (laughs) over here and we'll be like you guys should fight with guns we're gonna be over here that's what gareth we'll let you guys fight yeah i i think i think dave and i are going to do a joust over i guess who has the right to talk about henry kissinger i don't know Oh, that's an I think, exhausting project. Oh, that should be. <laughs> I think that forces should be joined. Yeah, I've talked actually. We've talked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've talked a little bit about that idea. It's just a matter of people's schedules, and also, like, do you have any idea how hard it is to write an actual episode about Henry Kissinger? And yeah, not, like, I, it's one. It's when you said yeah. it too. Was like I got excited, and then you get a little scared too because you're like, oh, he's still alive. I don't know, I, man. He's. I've read two two books already, and I think I'm going to need to read two more to be able to like realistically write a nice succinct four part episode about the man. 
He's still doing stuff. He'll he's never going to stop. He's st- uh, always He should be dead. Yes, he should. If, if you take nothing else uh, out of this episode about eggs, it's that Henry Kissinger ought to be dead. He may be eating those island eggs. That's yeah. a secret. I think he eats islands. And hope. Well, Billy. I'm a fan of him if he's listening. Yeah, I'm yeah, same here. <laughs> <laughs> Billy, you got anything you want to plug any plug any plug? Uh, la, la, la. I was in Borat too. That was really fun. Um see if you can find me. Uh and oh, I have a cannabis podcast where we interview the growers and the movers and shakers in uh that make up communities. We're at season two, we're in Humboldt County right now. And they have opened our doors, or, I mean, their arms and their doors to us in a way that we didn't foresee. So the season Aww. keeps getting longer. It's really cool. Now, Billy, one last yeah. question before we go out. If you were a strain of cannabis, mm-hmm. number one, sativa or indica, and number two, or hybrid, I guess. And number two, what's going to be the ratio of THC to CBD in the Billy Wayne Davis? Well, here's the thing. Uh, they're having... Because of, you know, legality, it's tough to mm-hmm. get a strain. There's some strains that have the higher CBD. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just hard to find because what happens, and this is just from knowing, this is from doing this podcast, and I know just a smidge of the knowledge, but because of capitalism, uh, they bred a bunch of shit and ruined some of the strains by jacking up the THC. Because you don't, because you got so many different cannabinoid receptors, yeah, that they're just now learning about. So my strain that I always go to is like I like a sativa that's like it's it's one of the purest one is Jack Herrera. Now most yeah. things are a hybrid now, um, because they've cross bred so much stuff that it's hard to find just a pure sativa or a pure indica. And again, it's capitalism, and then you know. And some of the uh, the old land races are harder to grow because of capitalism. There's just yeah. no money in it. Well, Billy, that I guess that the was the same. No, I mean, no, it was kind of the same story that I just told you, but with marijuana instead of eggs and more gunfights, but they're less publicized. Robert, um, if you were a type yeah, of egg... That's the thing egg, these guys are talking wait, about. Wait, wait, wait. Gunfights. We didn't answer this Fun. question. What If you were a type of egg, what type of egg would you be like? How would you would you be like... Oh, fucking ostrich. Hell yeah. Go big or go home. Billy? Yeah. I like duck eggs. Oh, those Me are good too. too. Duck yeah. eggs so are very delicious. good. Yeah. Good and also, egg. I just had some a duck. Solid duck egg. I always mm-hmm. order duck if it's on the menu. I Me too. Realized du- that about duck myself. cone feet. Oh, yep. and duck fat. Yeah. Ooh. I had a duck recently. We went out and went mushrooming and picked a bunch of chanterelles in the in the deep dark woods and then had a fucking, my friends brought over a duck they'd slaughtered and we had, oh, and I kept oh. the duck fat. So I was just, every day for like the next week, I was just throwing duck fat in every goddamn thing I made. As you that should. sounds yeah. awesome. Duck fat yeah. is the shit. Shit. Duck fat's amazing. Sorry. Well, everybody, Everyone eat some fucking duck me. fat. Yep. Destroy capitalism, or at least eggs. I don't know. The episode's uh, over. We Fair did enough. It. Bye.